The Saucony Peregrine Ice Plus 3 is a water-resistant shoe designed to tackle multiple surfaces, whether that's road, trail, ice, snow, that kind of stuff but does it do it well? Well, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve and I do need to let you know that Saucony did send the Peregrine Ice Plus 3 to me to review. I didn't pay for these. They're not gonna see this video ahead of time. Tell me what to say or whatever. I'm gonna say the truth, like always. Well, first up, we're gonna talk about the stats of the Peregrine Ice Plus 3. It is a neutral trail running shoe. There is definitely a fair amount of twist to the shoe as you can see. It is made of vegan and recycled materials. And for the stack height, in the rear, we've got 25 millimeters. And then in the forefoot, we've got 21 millimeters for a four millimeter drop. As for the weight of the Ice Plus 3, men's size 11, threw it on the scale, weighed in 11.8 ounces or 335 grams. By no means is that light. It is a heavy shoe and it feels heavy underfoot when running, which we'll get to later on. As for the fit, it does fit true to size. So whatever size you wear in Saucony will fit just fine in this. Before we get into the details of the Ice Plus 3, why don't you scroll down, give the video a thumbs up if you're finding it helpful, entertaining, or you like my orange shirt. I don't care. Give it a thumbs up. That would be really cool and much appreciated. Well, let's move on and talk about the upper of the Ice Plus 3. It is a water resistant upper with the run shield material designed to keep your foot dry and comfortable on those runs. I got to say in my testing, it did just that. The upper uh, kept the slush out, kept the snow out. Uh, my foot did stay dry and it has that form fit design in the upper of this last and it gives you kind of a, a personalized feel to your foot. It really hugs it well and gives you a good feel. The tongue here of the Peregrine Ice Plus 3 seems to be about the same as the tongue on the Peregrine 12. Uh, about that same thickness, same padding level, but this one has the run shield material to help keep that water and snow from getting in through the top. And it works really well. It's plenty comfortable, keeps those laces from digging into the top of the foot. It is semi-gusseted on both sides as well, again, to help keep some of that debris out and keep the tongue from moving side to side. The lacing system of the Ice Plus 3 is really good. Actually, honestly, all Sauconies for me, the lacing systems have been really good. They tie well, they don't come untied. It keeps your foot securely in the shoe and just provides a good lockdown. At the bottom of the uh, lacing system, you can see there is a gator clip, which is really good for this being a run shield material designed for running out in the snow and ice. You can then wear those gaiters to help keep the uh, snow and ice from getting inside the shoe, which is a big plus. And I have had a good lockdown. I have not needed to tie the runner's knot, but if you do, there is the extra eyelet right there just in case you need to do that. Part of the great lockdown that the Ice Plus 3 has is from this heel cup. It is a really nice, comfortable, well padded heel cup. It's definitely more uh, durable and has more cushion in the back than the Peregrine 12 does. That one was quite thin, kind of wore out really early and caused some issues. This feels like it's gonna last longer and be more comfortable. And it does kind of hug that foot, part of that form fit design we talked about, but it really helps you in combination with the lacing system to get a good secure fit. And I've had no issues, no heel slippage. Uh, it just, it's really good and secure. Take a look at the rear of the shoe. You can see there is a little uh, pull tab in the back, which has some reflective material and the heel counter is pretty stout. There's really not a lot of give to it there. A little bit at the top. Again, that's gonna help with some of that stability and the heel lockdown of the shoe. As for the toe box of the Ice Plus 3, it felt uh, plenty adequate for my foot. You know, I've got a standard width foot and honestly with these, I could move my toes around inside a little bit. It felt really good. I will say though, if you have a wide foot, unfortunately this is not available in a wide. Looking at the upper, you can see that there is this uh, overlay at the bottom. It's like a rubberized material and it's designed again to help keep some of those elements out as you're running through the winter, or whether that's slush, ice, or snow. And it worked, it kept my foot dry. And also uh, towards the back of the shoe, you can see the Ice Plus and on this side, the same thing. Uh, and that is reflective. So it does have some safety built into the shoe as well if you're running at night. Moving on to the midsole of the Peregrine Ice Plus 3, Saucony says it's a softer compound of their Power Run midsole foam designed to give more cushion and less weight. I gotta say though, in testing, it felt pretty flat and unresponsive didn't really feel very cushioned at all. I mean, honestly, it just felt kind of blah. It wasn't It wasn't exciting. It wasn't fun to run in. I mean, granted, people are not gonna be choosing the shoe to go do speed work in. I certainly would not. Inside the Ice Plus 3, there is a sock liner in here of Power Run Plus material. It's supposed to be more cushioning, give you a little bit extra there. Honestly, though, it, again, it just, I didn't feel anything. It just, there really is not a lot of cushioning with this shoe. It's just, unfortunately a boring experience to run in. So let's talk about the outsole of the Ice Plus 3. You can see it is pretty different. This does not look like a normal trail shoe. This is Saucony's Powertrack Ice platform. You can see the uh, lugs, which are three and a half millimeters in depth, are uh, shaped quite a bit differently. You can see that they're a lot wider uh, and they're not very aggressive. It's just a wider, larger contact patch to provide more contact with that surface. It's supposed to give you good grip and snow and ice. My results in testing though varied greatly depending on what kind of surface I was running on. If I was running on like a road that had ice with some really hard packed snow, like say a car had been driven over it many times, 
they had really good traction. That larger contact patch, it worked with the ice and the snow. It, it gave you really good grip. However, if it was truly ice, like, you know, the very clear kind of shiny stuff, really no grip, no different than a regular trail shoe. When I ran on like a dirt or crushed gravel trail with these over top of, let's say ice, some snow, some slush, uh, kind of your typical kind of stuff. Um, honestly, the grip was okay, but really it did not feel any better whatsoever. And honestly, I think a regular trail shoe from Saucony would probably give you more grip than these. Uh, those just dig in a little bit better where these, that wider contact patch doesn't really dig in as much. It's meant for that hard packed uh, snow, like I talked about the road kind of situation. Also underneath of that power track ice outsole, there is a full length rock plate as well. Going to give you some extra protection from any rocks that might poke up into the foot. As for the durability of that power track ice outsole, really uh, it's a newer compound. So it's kind of nobody knows yet. Uh, but I would say that just from running in it as I have looking at it right now, I think it's going to last for quite a long time. It seems to be a pretty durable material. As for the price of the Peregrine Ice Plus 3, it's 150 US dollars, which is about average for your Gore-Tex kind of run shield wintertime shoes. Well, the bottom line of the Peregrine Ice Plus 3 is it's it's okay. It doesn't excite. It's not a, a fun experience to run in. Honestly, it really doesn't give you much better traction on ice than a regular trail shoe, unless of course you're on that hard packed snow over top of ice like we talked about on a road. There, it works really well. So if you're gonna use these running through neighborhoods, maybe on sidewalks, it'd probably work pretty well. But if you're gonna to go to hit the trail, uh, the mountain, whatever it may be, honestly, I would rather pick the Saucony uh, Ride 15 TR, the Gore-Tex version, throw some uh, exo spikes on there, some micro spikes, give you much better traction, much better confidence uh, in that ice. And honestly, it'd be a much more comfortable ride too, because this just, uh, it's just not a comfortable shoe. The, the cushioning leaves something to be desired comfort. Well, let us know below in the comments if you have tried the Ice Plus 3, what your experience has been. Did it give you good traction? Did it not really do much better than a regular trail shoe? Uh, let us know. I'm sure everybody would really appreciate those comments down below. Well, thank you for watching. I do appreciate you all very much. If you haven't already, don't forget to give that video a thumbs up. It does help out a lot. And also, why don't you go ahead and take a look at the Saucony Ride 15 TR video on your screen. It's not the Gore-Tex version, but same shoe, just different upper. So check that out. And then on this side, I'll put a playlist of some other Saucony shoes to check out also. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. glasses fogged over or froze over I couldn't see out of them <laughs>